सो वेलकम बैक इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एच टी एल फाइल फॉर्मेट इन अर्लियर वीडियोज वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट फर्स्टली थ्री डी प्रिंटिंग यू विल क्रिएट यूर केड मॉडल देन यू विल कन्वर्ट यूर केड मॉडल इन टू द एच टी एल फॉर्मेट सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल टॉक अबाउट डिटेल इन एच टी एल फाइल सो एच टी एल फाइल्स स्टोर इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट थ्री डी मॉडल्स दिस फॉर्मेट डिस्क्राइब्स only the surface geometry of a three dimensional object without any representation of color or other model attributes so in stl file what you will get you will get only your model detail your surface detail uh, x y z detail you will not get the details of what type of color the object is having what type of attributes the object is having these files are usually generated by a computer aided design program so at the end of your 3d model you can convert your 3d file into dot stl format you will get in that software the stl format is the most commonly used file format for 3d printing when used in conjunction with a slit 3d slice slicer like cura it allows a computer to communicate with 3d printer hardware so stl file format is a very common in 3d printing we use uh, we use stl file for 3d printing and when we put this stl file to our slicing software and slicing software will convert it into the g codes you will see later on the true meaning of the file extension dot stl has been lost to the mist of time it's widely believed to be abbreviation of the word stereolithography stereolithography was the first 3d printing techniques which was discovered by charles hull in 1984 though sometimes it is also referred as standard tessellation language or standard triangulation language so how does the stl file format store a 3d model the main purpose of the stl file format is to encode the surface geometry of a 3d object it encodes this information using a simple concept called tessellation here you can see in this diagram this is how you can understand the tessellation so what is tessellation tessellation is the process of tiling a surface with one or more geometric shapes such that there are no overlaps or gaps if you have ever seen a tiled floor or wall that is good real life example of tessellation here in this image you can see the tiles are arranged in proper way in all three directions without overlapping them so this is a great example of tessellation when your 3d cad model will convert into stl format then your model will be distributed in the tessellation way so what is this tessellation is all about tessellation can involve simple geometric shapes or very complicated shapes let's talk about the invention of the stl file format so as i told you in 1987 chuck hull had just invented the first stereolithographic 3d printer and the albert consulting group of 3d system were trying to figure out a way to transfer information about 3d cad models to the 3d printer they realized that they could use tessellations of the 3d models surface to encode this information the basic idea was to tessellate the two dimensional outer surface of 3d models using tiny triangles also called facets and store information about the facets in a file so let's look at a few example to understand how this work for example if you have a simple 3d cube as you can see in this diagram this can be covered by 12 triangles as shown in the image below so in a cube we know there are six faces but but i will put one line into one face then we can break one face into two triangles so you can see there there are two triangles per face since the cube has six faces it's up to 12 triangles if you have a 3d model of a square then it can be converted by many small triangles also shown in the same so you can see in, in those figures then we generally break our model into small small triangles in stl file format what stl do that stl convert your 3d model into small small triangles how does an stl file store information about facets so the stl file format provide two different ways 
of storing information about the triangular facets that tile the object surface. These are called ASCII encoding and the binary encoding. In both formats, the following information of each triangle is stored. The coordinates of the vertices and the components of unit normal vector to the triangle. The normal vector should point outwards with respect to 3D model. So this is the thumb rule here you can see out. So your normal this is your normal vector and this should point outwards with respect to your 3D model. There are some special rules for the STL format. The first rule is that the vertex rule. The vertex rule states that each triangle must share two vertices with its neighboring triangle. The orientation rule. The orientation rule says that orientation of the facet which way is in the 3D object and which way is out must be specified in two ways. The all positive octant rule. The all positive octant rule says that the coordinates of the triangle vertices must all be positive. The triangle sorting rule. The triangle sorting rule recommends that the triangles appears in ascending z value order. Suppose you have STL file then how it will be 3D printed. So for 3D printing the STL file has to be opened in a dedicated slicer. We will use slicing software. So what is slicer? Slicer is a piece of 3D printing software that convert digital 3D model into printing instructions for your 3D printer to create an object. The slicer chops up your STL file into hundreds sometimes thousands of flat horizontal layers based on the setting you choose and calculates how much material your printer will need to execute and how long it will take to do it. So let me show you how you can convert your STL file into G code. For that you will use slicing software. Here I am using Cura software for slicing our STL file. This is STL file I have imported in this Cura software and I want to convert this STL file into G code so I can print this in 3D printer because 3D printer will accept G code. So here is option of slice if I will do put here slice then this is slicing. So here after some time uh, you can see that uh, it will take 2 hours and 18 minutes for printing and it will take 24 grams material. You can see your preview also that how this product, how this object will be made. Here you can see it will created by layer by layer and this will be like this and the nozzle will run like this. This is, this will be the path of your nozzle. Here I have created the G code so I will save this to disk. So just I have saved this onto the desktop and let's see how this G code will look like. Here we have got G codes where all the paths have been created and the code had been generated like uh, Fever, Merlin, Time, which type of parameter is there, M140, G1, G, G, X100, Y20, it means it means nozzle have to move 10 mm in X direction, 20 mm in Y direction and uh, F1500 move to X10 to 1500 mm per second. So here you can see the code has been created and this code will be I will put into the 3D printer and 3D printer will work according to the data given by this G code. So this is how it works. So once the G code has been uploaded to your 3D printer the next stage is for those separate two dimensional layer to be reassembled as a three dimensional object on your print bed. This is done by depositing a succession of thin layers of plastics metals or composite material and building up to model one layer at a time. So next question here comes in your mind that is every STL file 3D printable? Unfortunately not. Only a 3D design that is specifically made for 3D printing is 3D printable. The STL file is just the container for the data not a guarantee that something is printable. 3D models suitable for 3D printing need to have a minimum wall thickness and watertight surface geometry to be 3D printable. Even if it's visible on a computer screen, it's impossible to print something with a wall thickness of zero. How you can optimize an STL file for best 3D printing 
performances. So the STL file format approximates the surface of a CAD model with triangles. The approximation is never perfect and the facets introduce coarseness to the model. The 3D printer will print the object with the same coarseness as specified by the STL file. Of course by making the triangles smaller and smaller, the approximation can be made better and better resulting in good quality prints. However, as you decrease the size of the triangles, the number of triangles needed to cover the surface also increases and it will take a lot of time to print. It is therefore very important to find the right balance between the file size and print quality. Most CAD softwares offer a couple of settings when exporting STL files. These settings control the size of the facet, hence print quality and file size. Here are the two parameters that are very important for the quality of your STL file. The first is code height or tolerances. Most CAD software will let you choose a parameter called code height or tolerances. The code height is the maximum distance from the surface of the original design and the STL mesh. So here you can see this circular path is your original CAD file and this is the this is a triangle face and the distance between this line to this curve is, is known as code height. So if the code height is more then definitely your surface finish will not be too much it will be like coarse but if code height will be less then your object will be smooth. So if you choose the right tolerances your print will look smooth and not pixelated. It's quite obvious that the smaller the code height the more accuracy the facets represent the actual surface of the model. The second thing is angular deviation or angular tolerances. Angular tolerances limits the angle between the normal of the adjective triangle. The default angle is usually set at 15 degree. Decreasing the tolerance which can range 0 to 1 improve print resolution. Here in this diagram you can clearly understand that how these angular tolerances work. Now next question will comes into your mind that are there any alternatives to the STL file format? Yes, of course the STL file format is not the only format used in 3D printing. There are over 30 file formats for 3D printing. Most important is the OBJ file format which can store color and texture profiles. Another option there is polygon file format PLY which was originally used for storing 3D scanned object. More recently, there have been efforts to launch a new file type by 3MF consortium which is proposing a new 3D printing file format called 3MF. They claim it will streamline and improve the 3D printing process. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of using STL file format over other file formats? Since there are many 3D printing file formats, the obvious question is which one should you use for your prints? The answer as it turns out depends a lot on your use case. When not to use an STL file? As we saw earlier, the STL file format cannot store additional information such as color, material, its of the facets or triangles. It only store information about the vertices and the normal vector. This means that if you want to use multiple color or multiple materials for your prints, then the STL file format is not the right choice. The OBJ format is a popular format enjoying good support which has a way to specify color, material, its. Therefore, this is the right choice for this task. So when to use the STL file? On the other hand, if you want to print with a single color or material which is most obtained the case, then STL is better than OBJ since it is a simpler, leading to smaller file sizes and faster processing. Let's talk about the resources from where you can get the STL ready-made STL files. So congratulations, you now know quite a bit about STL and can be undoubtedly called an STL file format expert. We will share some awesome software and resources that you can use for downloading, viewing, editing and repairing your STL files. So there are many 
repositories, marketplaces, and search engines on the websites containing literally millions of free STL files. My favorite is Thingiverse. I always download STL files from Thingiverse and edit in in Cura. We hope that an in-depth understanding of the STL file format helps you become a more knowledgeable users of your 3D printer. Thank you so much. If you want to learn complete 3D printing and make a career in this field, you can click to the link given in description box and start your journey now. In this course, you will learn 3D printing also known as additive manufacturing from start to finish. This course includes design of 3D models, slicing of 3D model, 3D scanning, types of 3D printers, STL file formats, post-processing, 3D printing materials and many more along with assignments and quizzes. At the end of the course, you will get a certificate which will help you for your job interviews. The prices of course is so minimal that everyone can afford. So see you inside the course. Thank you.